Hiya Duck, we are back, we've got Cheryl in the building, I've got the neck fan on because it's a scorcher again in England. I mean, the global warming is real. I'm hoping it's going to rain because, you know, my grass is not green anymore, it's brown. Um, and we've got a hose pipe ban. So have that, you got one? Wow, well, lots of yeah. the places in lots of places in the UK have a hose pipe ban. Yeah, I don't know if we have, but you know I'm trying to be good. My grass is green, so I'm going to show you how today how to do a ombre French ombre nail or a French fade nail on chazzy. And if you haven't got chazzy, the colour gel polish. I'm sorry. Why? Wow. <laughs> it's a very popular colour, isn't it, Cheryl? It is. Of course it is. We're going to put tips on first. I just want to show you something about tips. Now, as we look at these tips, now Cheryl's nail really narrows and then it's slightly dis-shaped to you. We've like lost a little bit there. So we've got to kind of make up for that. So we can put the tip on. You could sculpt it if you want, but today we're going to tip and I'm going to talk to you about tips. Can you see how it's a little, it's a little bit large? So we can see that it's, it goes a tiny bit wide just here, but we have got to fill in this corner here, haven't we? Yeah? Now I'm going to show you this one. So we've got here, this is a size five. This is a size six. Now that fits. However, we, if you look at the rest of the nail, this part here, so I'm having to apply quite a lot of pressure to get that fit, yeah? And then the nail goes really narrow. Whereas if we put this one on, can you see how it just flows a little bit better from the side? I'm going to show you from the top camera. So if we look at the side walls of the nail and we follow it down, do I need to put some black underneath just so you can see it a little bit more? That's better. So, can you see side walls of the nail? Imagine them com coming out straight because obviously this part's missing. It looks more aesthetically pleasing, more streamlined. As we pop this one on, hmm. can you see how much narrower it goes? And don't get me wrong, we like narrow nails, but there's a lot more pressure on the nail. Now, I will show you a little trick you can do. If you were between sizes, and you think this size is too big, which we are going to get away with that size, it's fine. But if you think you, oh, it's too big and that one's too small, well, if you get a pair of scissors, get your tip and cut here. When you apply this on now, this little tiny gap here will actually release some of the pressure and your tip will fit wider. Top tip. Can you see the tiny, tiny... I mean, you can even cut out the tiniest little slither. I'll show you. Which is obviously easier than resizing your tip. So can you see that little, tiny, little V? So we pop that on, it relieves the pressure from the curvature of the tip on the nail. So it makes it fit a little bit better. And now it doesn't look too narrow. Yes, we're compensating for this here. You always remember that the shape will change throughout the full length of the nail. So if it doesn't look right, don't use it. But if you're in the situation where you've got you're between sizes, do you know what I mean? I'm like a, you know, an 8, 10. More of a 10, to be honest. Sometimes I'm like an 8 up top and a 10 at the bottom because, you know, the belly is not good. But the breasticles don't really have many of them. Don't have much of that. So this is an 8 at the top and this is a size 10 at the bottom, just in case you want to send me any clothes. <laughs> but you know what I mean? If you're between sizes with your tips, 
Then cut the, li cut the little slip first of all, place it on. You'll notice as soon as you place that on, it doesn't feel so resistant. It's not like the curvature of the nail is not resisting against the natural nail. And that'll help you fit it so much easier. It'll go a little bit wider. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. There you are. But because I want the nail to not scoop in too skinny here, because it kind of looked like that, didn't it? It won't fit with the shape that I'm doing. I am going to use this tip and I'm just going to cut off that little bit of the corner there. Like that. I'm going to place this down now. It's going to fit nice. Okay? So we're going to wipe over the nail with clean-up solution. That's going to clean it and dehydrate the nail. If you don't do this before you put your tips on, your tips will not stick or you'll, you'll struggle with sticking the tip on. Now here's the point where we check it straight. So I have a little look. Are we straight with the finger? Hold it in position for around 10 seconds. Turn it over, are we straight? We're straight, it's at this point you would need to slide the glue if it wasn't perfectly straight. TikTok fan. It's not a TikTok fan, it's a, um, a Amazon, Amazon duck, neck fan. It's good, isn't it? You need one in your life, don't you? Well, we've got aircon. Oh, duck. <laughs> Posh. So you've got aircon in the salon? We have now. I love that. So, when was that fitted? Uh, last year, when yeah. we had that 33 oh, degrees. When it was year. hot last year. Well, the thing is, I think... You think this is going to be... This is going to be the norm. It's going to be the norm. It is going to be the norm. So I've just cut that tip just to the desired shape because we're not going for a ballerina or coffin. We are going for more of a, I want to say this is more of a modern almond slash pipe kind of shape. Oh, I love my pipe. I love a pipe duck. Mm. Well, that's pipe. <laughs> <laughs> just going to quickly blend over that tip. The main part you want to blend is here and here. Don't worry so much about this section because it's going to be covered with quite a lot of acrylic. Support the tip as you do this because you don't want to break it. You don't want to release it from here. And it's fragile at this point because it has no support. Just going to clean over again. Oh yeah, we're too long. I always do this, I, I was, get a bit... I was going to say... Are you going to say that's a little bit longer? Like, yeah, that looks a bit longer. It's a bad habit of mine, that is. I just... I, I just end up going a little bit longer all the time. I just I want... Yeah, I didn't want six foot. You did say you don't want six foot nails. I just reshaped that, there we are. Let's have a little look. Oh, that's better. We've got room for a bit of filing. There we are, nice and clean. We go on with the primer. Some systems have a dehydrator and a primer, but we use the cleanup solution because that dehydrates as well as cleaning. So it kind of gets rid of you using additional product. But you should always use what the brand tells you to use, do you know what I mean? Little avoid service breakdown. I'm going to use the Oscar the Wild brush. This is our size 12 acrylic brush. And the system I'm using today is Nail Gaga. I have got Cover Pink Beige, Crystal Clear, Sheer Pink, but I'm only going to use a tiny bit of that. And Extreme White. I'm going to get all my pots open. I know it's dangerous. It's so dangerous. 
So when you're doing a French ombre, the first color you want to lay down is the white. So when we're putting this bead down, you're going to place it around about where the natural nail finishes. I'm just going to pat from side to side and I'm going to feather it up. This is the most important part at this stage. Don't worry about the rest. Just get that feathered up. Then we're going to tip the finger down and we're going to pat and press the product down the nail. So you're going to be using more of the body of the nail because the product will be setting. But the more you touch it, the more it will move because the more you're feeding acrylic liquid into the ratio of the mixture of the powder and the liquid. Make sure all those sides are covered. So if you see from the side, there's a tiny bit here. And if you're doing the right one, that might help. Tiny bit of white there. I just realised I was pinching the L out of your finger then, sorry. That's nothing compared the, to what you're doing. The vice grip. Do you miss me vice grip? Yeah, I have. Like hole in the head? Ask me at the end of the day. <laughs> You've got no feeling left. I've got no blood left in my finger. I feel like I just need a tiny bit of a wash here. Right, so. When this white is on, you want to make sure it's as even as you can. So, if you look at the side view of your nail, look down the barrel, look above the top, I can see there's a slight dip here. So we're just going to get a little tiny bead and just alter that. If you look overhead, you can see how there's a very slight dip on this side. Now if you don't address this now it's going to make it harder for you to create that ombre and that blend and when you look at the side view sorry Cheryl what you want is can you see how it's very very flat there's no lumps and bumps in here if there are lumps and bumps, when you apply your next colour, it will sit in the lumps and bumps and you won't get a nice feathered blend. Okay? Next colour we're going to use is our cover colour. So this is pink beige, cover pink beige. And we're going to go at the cuticle area. I'm tipping the finger down. Just going to get that cuticle nice and neat. And then we're going to bring the product down. Leave the majority of it at that apex area, but then you're going to feather down. So lots of brushing, but very flat. So don't do this with your brush. It's all very flat, 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 flat like this. And that will drag down a small amount of product. If you come in behind with your brush, then you will drag too much product down. So you can see we've already built the apex. So the structure is going to be there, but we want more of a blend because it's blended a bit, but we want a little bit more. So I'm going to take a bead that's going to be quite wet. I'm just going to feather that back and feather that down. So we've got a little bit more of a blend. Now the next thing I'm going to do in this little pot, what I have mixed is a tiny bit of the transparent pink, a little, I mean a little bit like a tiny scoop of the white and the rest is clear. And I'll show you the colour you want to get and I'm going to, you mix it all together 
and I'll show you what you need to achieve. You can use a natural colour, but can you see how that has just a little bit of pink in it? I'll pop it onto here. So it's a little bit of pink, it's transparent enough, but it also adds like a cloudy masking colour. So when you lay this down, it will give you a soft ghosting colour to help your blend because it's not massively pigmented. If I show you on the sculpting form as well what it looks like. And then as I pat this, you'll able to see that it is semi sheer but it adds a little bit of clouding or fogging to help with that blend. So you can see over those numbers, it just softens them. So it's going to blur out your fade. I'm going to place it on the blend and feather back flat with your brush, feather down, Again, very flat. Would you only use that semi sheer on pink and white fades? Or would you use it over a colour fade? You can use it over a colour fade as well. It depends. If the colour's too dark, then it looks too milky. But mm. if it is like a mid to light colour, then you can get away with it. Um, or you can use a natural. You don't necessarily have to have that bit of pink in it. I just like how that pink just it just mm. flows nice with the colour at the back and it gives you a nice fade. I just want a tiny bit more here. What would you say the hardest fade to do? Black. Black to white. Why is that? Because they are both polar opposites, mm. so it's getting that fade. But you can use a natural colour, or you could use, if you haven't got a natural colour, mix a tiny bit of white into your clear in a separate pot, and you'll get that natural milky, kind of like skimmed mm. milk colour, and you can use that to fade as well. Um, black to red is probably probably more difficult. But what I would do then is if, if, because the pigment's so intense in the black, whereas the red won't be, I would put mm. the black down first, then the red. Because the red will be, and it always is slightly transparent, where black just isn't. And because it's slightly transparent, it'll give you more of a fade. So you put the solid color down first, just like we have done here, the white. And then you'll put your other color down if it's got that slight bit of transparency it will fade over a lot nicer than two solid pigments. Does so that make sense? A stronger colour will a stronger colour will come through better, come through the weaker colour better. Yes. Yeah. So we'll always put that most highly pigmented colour down first. So black first. Black first. Yeah. So black into a nude. Black into a nude. Well Ooh, yeah, so instead of that'd be nice. Mm. So you put the black down first, then you put your nude down. But, but you to, could fade to, it with a natural colour, you know, that milky colour. Yeah. Mm. You could even fade it with this kind of colour because it's mm. got that bit of pink in it. So you can customise it as much as you want. Once this is done, this looks nice, doesn't it? Now, if I start filing this, I'm going to start filing away what I've done. That's my next question. Yeah. Do you ink, put a clear over? Yeah. Because some people don't, do they? Yeah, I know. Them's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it does need filing though, because if you mm. look, it, it's got a slight dip. You can see just, mm. just here. It, I want to now protect the blend. That mm. fade needs protecting. So we're gonna add our little comfort blanket, which will be a bead of clear. And we're gonna start that from the apex and work down. 
Now, make sure you go side to side because you can even lose that fade from the sides. So if you think here, oh, you don't need any on, any clear, you will need a bit of clear there just to protect that side part of your fade. And I can just see a tiny dip here, which is annoying me. If you ever smoothing out, keep your brush very flat. So flat to the nail. So we've got rid of the dip, we've still got an apex and we've now protected the fade. So all those parts are important, you know, you can't really skip any of them. It'll give you a nice fade, it's protected, you're going to get a, a uniform fade each time as well. So with you being a bit of a gel expert, mm -hmm. I say a bit of very much. How many years have you been doing gel nails? Come on, Cheryl. Mm, 20. 20 years doing gel nails? Jesus. That's good. So, um, would you layer this in a very similar way? No. With gel? No. But could you? Yeah, the, um, the method would be the same, but layering it wouldn't. You right. You would have to, um, obviously, instead of you put the white on first. Yeah. I would put a cover pink on first or a cover nude on first yeah very thinly yeah then i would apply a uh, thicker vis, vis i can't say that word. viscosity oh that's it I, uh, I put a white that hard gel but so I'd have to a thicker this like a paint on gel no no it's got to be it's got to be thick it won't self-level yeah so you put it on where you want it where you want it and i'd use a flat square gel brush yeah which I'm still waiting for Chesa Squeza. Chesa Squeza, we do need a Chesa Squeza talk. And I would flip back. Yeah. So the bulk so where the fade is. So you flip back from the thicker. From the tip? No, from here. From there. From there you flip so back. So flip back. Yeah. And you get more white on the end of the nail. Because it's dragging it down. It's dragging it down. Yeah. And then I would use a semi sheer pink. Yeah. Um, gel all over, feathering it down to the end yeah. where it's you're just not quite going over the end yeah. of the white. Yeah, because it's very thin. That clear I put on yeah. here is very thin, so it's that simple, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And then if I want to do a shimmer of glitter going through it or across it, I'd put the glitter on, then encapsulate it all in a clear gel, then file it. I think we need to see that in action one day, Jo. Maybe when we've got the chesi. And we've got the uh, Chesa Squazza, the Chesa Squazza <laughs> brush. And I would only use that brush to flip gel, yeah. the, the white gel. I suppose it wouldn't work with a round brush, would it? No, because you have to wipe your bristles every time you do a flip back. And you do that just on a limp free pad? No, just, just with tissue. Just with, with like a paper towel? Huh? No, not with a paper towel, it's a bit rough. I'd just use a soft Kleenex. Oh yeah, just like a tissue, just yeah. pull it out and have a clean it, yeah. Cool. It took me a while to learn that technique because I think gel fades are so hard to do and mm -hmm. to get that nice blend. Yeah. That's why I do acrylic. <laughs> <laughs> it's much easier yeah. to do acrylic, I think, anyway. Yeah. But yeah, but that's good though that you've managed to suss that out and... Lockdown, that was. Lockdown sussed it out. Right, did... I'm going to do this. Yeah. Lockdown did that, though. It gave people the opportunity to practice stuff. Mm. And, you know, we we had lots of nail techs come through, new nail techs come through, through through lockdown. You know, lots of people changed their careers. Lots of people from changed their careers from a nail tech to something else as mm. well. So we had nail techs that were reborn and nail techs that... Um, 
just watched your videos and wanted to become yeah. an art tech. Yeah. And now they're doing it, yeah. I think as well there's different methods of doing a gel French fade. Mm -hmm. There's different ways to do it. There's the sponging. Mm -hmm. uh, Which the I, do, I, do, I do like sponging. You like the sponging. Mm -hmm. See, I just found it a bit... Do you know what I mean? The you sponge know you... has got to be super dense, hasn't it? Because if it's not, yeah. then you get the... It's hard to dab that. Then you get the... Yeah. You get the little pity marks, yeah. don't you? Yeah. And then there's the one with the um, the pigment powders. Oh, well, that's, I think that's an absolute dawdle. If you've that? got a really nice milled pigment powder. Yeah. It's got that. to be a good quality pigment. Mm. If it's this like a some or, cheap one, yeah. then it's game over. That's probably what I use now. No, no, that doesn't work for me. But you find what works for yourself, don't you, mm. as well? You know, just because, like, I do this like this, yes, it may work for you, may may not. You might like a different method, and that's... It's all about sharing those different methods and skills and finding what's what's right for you. Mm. So, let's give this a little bit of a buff. So imagine if I got a lumpy bumpy white underneath all that effort that I've done, it would, it would interfere with the blend, it would interfere with the filing, because I've now got this protected layer that I can file and we still have a lovely French Ombre! Everybody say, Ombre! <laughs> ombre! 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 ombre. Riba, riba. It's not what they say, is it really? But you know. <laughs> ombre is one of the most asked for nails. It's one of the most asked for yes. in the salon, yeah. Yes. They just come in and say, can I have an ombre? Yeah. Do they tell you what colour ombre? Is it, it's is always it, this. It's always a French yeah. ombre. Yeah. French ombre. Do you know what? It just looks so classy. Mm. It's so classy. Very popular for brides. Yes. So, let's give these a dust. And let's get some nice top coat on. Another trick, if your blend still isn't right, if you take this top coat, so this top coat is called Laura. It's a transparent pink. I'm not gonna use this, but I wanna show you, for instance, what it would look like. So, it's a top coat, but it's a transparent pink, yeah? So if you pull this down, super thin, Take off the excess off your brush and then drag off all that pigment off the end with your brush. The colour will actually hide any imperfections because it's a transparent pink. So that's good. That'd be good for gel, wouldn't it, as well? Yeah. That'd be really good for gel. But we're just going to put normal top coat on. What's that called, Laura? Laura. Laura. You've got that, haven't you? Yeah, I've got that. It's in the jelly one. Yeah. I love that. I love that over my toes when I'm doing really French. Do you only have French on your toes, don't you? I only have French. Why? I'm boring. I love French toes. I think they look clean. They look tidy. That's the least that we do in the salad. Who wants colour and glitter? Does everyone want colour? Oh, twinkly toes. I'm a red. Do you have red on your toes? Mm. You've got good colouring, your skin colour like, is so nice with red though. Mind you saying that, Vanessa put red on the other day and I was like, oh, that, that really suits you. And she was like, I would never have picked red, mm. which we were just testing some products. So she had the red on and it looks so nice. I saw a lady in the pool when I was in Dubai in June. She had the short square nails and then red toenails. She was lying on a lilo and you know you just think, oh, 
The first thing I saw, look at her now, is the muslin. Just red. She was dead brown as well. She was dead brown, you mm. just saw her toe. What, her toenails were red? Yes. And then she had short toenails square. Toenails red and short square. Short square. Nails. What kind of red? Red, just plain red. Red, red, and you were like, yeah. She's a classy lady. Yeah. It goes with every skin tone, I think. Red, uh, Yeah, because, you know, Vanessa's um, quite pale, and she, yeah, Mm -hmm. looked so nice. I think I've just knocked it. You have not. You've knocked it. You've not. You, <laughs> a gel nail tech, has knocked the nail. It's all right. I've just put on my Instagram, best nail model ever. Um. I, I'm retracting <laughs> my statement. I'm joking. I'm, I'm joking. You hey, she better be. <laughs> Is that long enough? You're looking for a mark, aren't you? <laughs> She's what I did real <laughs> Right, let's put a bit of cuticle oil on now to finish off the job. What's this cuticle oil now? This cuticle oil oh. is called, oh. uh, it's from a company called Eclair and they are from... Is that chocolate? It's, it's like, no, it's called Sassy and, Sassy and Classy. And I forget the company it's from. We'll link it below because we have got the info. They're a nice big bottle, aren't they? 30 mil. Mmm. Good Good for salon. Bit big for retail. Bit big pulling yam bag. Oh. It's good for dry skin around the nail shaft. Is that what it says? <laughs> Let me look. <laughs> Massage into Do clean, you know? dry skin around the nail shaft. Well, that's a description of ever did see one. Well. <laughs> Good job it says nail before the yes. shaft. Yeah. Yes. There you are, guys. That is French ombre. I was going to call it 101. Is it what you call it? French ombre 101. What's 101? I don't know. Uh, I think it means 100 different one ways to do it. Okay, that's just one way. <laughs> <laughs> French ombre 01. <laughs> There you are, guys. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Everything I've used today will be listed below, as always. And if you've made it all the way to the end of this video, you are a superstar. Give yourself a pat on the back and give us a thumbs up. Ta-da! Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> we'll be back in a minute. Here's an ad break. <laughs> Already. <laughs>